Hello and hello and welcome to the Think Bamboo podcast. I'm your host JJ and our guest today directly from Germany is Ravia Schurman. She is the co-founder of a non-profit organization who's working with bamboo in Ghana, Africa. Welcome, Rabea. Hi, JJ. Thanks for having me. Great having you here and, and, and sharing, being able to share your story. I was really um, impacted uh, the very first time I read about what you have been doing um, and, and that you've, you've built an NPO, a nonprofit organization in Africa, and you're actively working with bamboo there. So um, what can you share uh, with us, um, the bamboo enthusiastic people, um, regarding your experience there? Um, should we show uh, the presentation? You have some photos there? Uh, yeah, I have some photos. Uh, first, I want to say we are, we are located in Germany. We are an NGO in Germany, but we have our project in Ghana and we are working with two other NGOs which are located in Ghana directly. So we are collaborating and together we are bringing this project forward. And yeah, there are some pictures that show some project development. <laughs> Maybe we can start with those ones. So I have, yeah. I have something to start with. There we go. So actually the project is, um, we are in the process of establishing a bamboo training and development center in Ghana, in the Eastern region of Ghana. Uh, this is to boost the bamboo sector in Ghana. And well, the pictures that we are seeing now is uh, directly at the project site where we uh, started with the first phase of the project, which is setting up a treatment facility in order to treat bamboo. And the treatment is that pool, right? The pool we see here, huge uh, exactly. cement pool. Where yes. you submerge the bamboo um, with what is it, borax salt? Yes, borax, borax and boric acid salts so mixed um, with water, exactly, which is the most sustainable, the most environmentally friendly uh, way of uh, treating bamboo. There are if you get the salt. <laughs> if you get the salt, yes, and really? I I can say yeah there. It was a challenge to get it in Ghana, but we can get it, yes. So um, that's the first choice. There are different other methods of, of treating bamboo, but none is as environmentally friendly than this one. So that's our choice because the whole project is about sustainability and um, yeah, not and, harming and, uh, the, the, environment, the environment, but rather helping it, yes. <laughs> And I see on the photos you have like plenty of, of uh, volunteers or people helping there. I see locals and uh, probably a lot of Europeans too. So uh, yeah. you, you've managed there like a huge group of people to, to get that uh, building, right? <laughs> yes, there's actually a lot of white people there. Uh, this is because we, um, well, let me start somewhere. Um, <laughs> Doing a construction project in Ghana with bamboo is really challenging because, you know, there is no experience, no, um, yeah, no experts in the field of bamboo as a construction material. And that is why we want to build this training center for people mm -hmm. to get access to knowledge and, and, and training. But this training center is supposed to be built with bamboo itself. So how how do you start <laughs> if you don't <laughs> have uh, if you don't have experienced uh, builders or architects uh, to start with? So that is why we and our association, I mean our NGO, we are no architects uh, either and no in engineers. So. To get the expertise, we um, 
took a university on board. Uh, the, mm -hmm. the white people you are seeing there are students uh, of the Rhein-Main University of mm -hmm. Applied Science. Uh, Germany. They, they, yes, it's in Germany and it's an interdisciplinary uh, group. They are mm -hmm. not only architects, they are engineers and I mean, they are coming from various backgrounds and it didn't start in Ghana. They had in, there were um, se seminars before then, I mean, in concept, making the concept and all that. And then this was the final, the final phase for them going to Ghana and have a workshop with the locals together. So, mm -hmm. <clears throat> yeah, it was a learning experience for, for all. all, I imagine, all yeah. Yes, um, the locals and, and the students. Uh, and lots of coordination because uh, um, probably you had like a, a time slot. You had to uh, get that uh, uh, building done, right? I see you used like a, a method where you, you pre-designed uh, the frames and then just like um, um, pulled them up, right? And uh, that was faster probably than building everything on this, site. Is actually, mm -hmm, this is actually a method that is, a, I think, I would say the most easiest way of building with bamboo. Mm -hmm. The design that you see, I mean, those frames um, was not done by us or by the students. This is, uh, it is out of a handbook uh, for mm -hmm. bamboo construction. Actually, um, I think Jörg Stamm was also part of it in writing it and they oh. tested they tested these structures in Ethiopia before so mm -hmm. because oh, we are so. freshly starting we said let's take a design that has already been tested said, yeah. <laughs> so we are on the safe side yeah and maybe we have to mention that the, the special uh, reality here is you have uh, Bambusa vulgaris vitata, the, the golden bamboo, which is, let's say, uh, not the, the best one for buildings, but it does work also at the end of the day, right? So um, that's pretty cool. You've been able to use bamboo from their I... local. Yes, I mean, the Bambusa vulgaris, we all know, is not the best bamboo when it comes to construction, but it is uh, a bamboo which has the properties to use it. So that is what we have in Ghana. We have it a lot. Uh, it's, mm -hmm. it's growing abundantly. So we said, uh, since this, this whole project is about... Um, boosting the bamboo sector in order to improve livelihoods, um, we said, let's use what the people have in front of their doors. Um, mm -hmm. Well, we could we could build with Wadua, get it from somewhere, but if this is not accessible for the people on the spot, then, well, there's no point absolutely, <laughs> uh, absolutely. for them to, to, to start with it. So, yeah, it's Bambusa vulgaris, I think you said Vitata. Mm -hmm. I'm, I'm not an expert, but I think Vitata is another type of vulgaris, which is not uh, feasible for construction. Mm -hmm. The Vitata one is, uh, if, if I'm right, is the green one with yellow stripes. Uh, the one you're using is just yellow? It's just green, green the bambusa vulgaris vulgaris yeah oh, so i, they I don't are... see it here <laughs> I, oh maybe Ping. if you go up i put pictures of the if you ah, go here very yeah the much first one up. yes ah, okay yeah yeah, so yeah yeah absolutely this is this is the green one and if you see the picture on the left down mm -hmm. you see the yellow one with green stripes yeah stripes yeah. that is that the is vitata. the vitata and exactly they say, they say is is not not good for construction at all even worse <laughs> <laughs> yeah even worse That's yeah true. That's so true. <laughs> yeah here here we see the um how you find bamboo in ghana 
it is not cultivated. I mean, there are some nurseries and something is coming up, but usually people don't cultivate bamboo. These are natural stands. Uh, not yet. Not yet, exactly. That's not what yet. we are working on. Yeah. So, so these uh, are. Ne- mm-hmm. Sorry, are, are are you or have you already planted um, different types of bamboo in Ghana now? Or is this something you're working on? Um, that is a different part of the project that not uh, we as Grow Color for Ghana undertake. But we, as I already mentioned, we are working with uh, our partners, uh, two local NGOs, which is mm-hmm. BIDG. Bamboo for Integrated Development in Ghana. And the other one is ABC. They are the advocates for biodiversity conservation. And Mm -hmm. they are into agroforestry. So um, there have been some trials of planting bamboo like um, at different species. Mm -hmm. Um, Mm -hmm. So, yeah, that's their area. And I think the... That's a good part. You know, both parts are so important. People in Ghana, they don't want to grow bamboo because of, I mean, bamboo has a bad reputation. There are some myths about it and and they don't see it as a, as a economic crop, a cash crop or anything because there is no market. I mean, if mm-hmm. you find some bamboo products, but not much. So the farmers are saying, okay, if I grow bamboo, who is going to take it from from me? Yeah, there <laughs> who's is going, no market. Who's going to buy it? Exactly. Yeah. So, and that is why the other part, the, the construction of the center, the establishment of the training and, and development center is so important because the 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 processing of bamboo and turn it into uh, a construction material or other products um, yeah, need to be established as well in order to create a market. Um, so, of course. yeah, it goes hand in hand and you have to start somewhere. <laughs> so and it's a long term is... approach, right? I mean, uh, this doesn't happen from one day to the other, I assume. And uh... Now you have one important step, which is the center and the, and the, the transformation with the pool, and uh, probably you're working on the next steps. Um, I can imagine. Yeah, the the next phase would be. I mean, now the 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 structure that you have seen, the pool and the structure that you have seen. I mean, we all know it doesn't look very extraordinary. We are looking at building something that really catches attention and makes the people in Ghana see, oh, bamboo is a very durable and also nice looking material that you can build with. Um, so uh, this this structure that you've seen has is, is more functional because it is the center the cent- the central point of everything you need to treat bamboo in order to make it durable in order to make it last and make a construction material out of it so we haven't it's, it doesn't really look so attractive so the next phase would be the workshop area the place where people can come together and work with bamboo and also have seminars or yeah, workshops or congresses or whatever is going to happen there in future. And this structure, we will pay more attention on on the design and the looks of it in order to make people see it and say, say yeah, hey, let's build this bamboo. It's a good one. <laughs> it's a good material. It's going to take time. I mean, it's also mm-hmm. a process there within the people that um once they see it they start thinking about it and it, of course if it if it if it's something more impressive it, it it's, it's gonna, people are going to talk more about it but it, anyway it's going to take time right so this is uh something actually really cool uh you've been able to do um 
and uh, compared to classic construction, right? I mean, uh, this is like tropical there in Ghana, right? You have like a lot of humidity, subtropical. Um, mm -hmm. How many rains do you have a day? Um, what is it? You have rainy season and, and dry season or how is the climate there normally? Uh, well, generally it is raining and season and, and dry season, exactly. Um, when we speak about Ghana, uh, we can't generalize it when it comes to the rains because something very interesting about Ghana is it has different zones. Mm -hmm. So in the south, you have the, the, the subtropical uh, climate, uh, but going up north, you get close to the, the there comes the savanna zone and then you get close to the i mean the, the the climate changes is much more dry and not tropical at all so um but where you are with the in, project in specifically yeah, now we are we have been in the transitional so, zone before now we are down since 2022 we are in the eastern region which is uh yeah more tropical and you you have the raining season now is stopping now i have heard the rains have stopped so uh we are entering the dry season now and and how have you experienced like local uh, buildings? Um, I assume a um, lot of buildings there are built with cement and um, uh, are maybe a bit humid. Or what are the challenges that normal building methods um, uh, have there because of that uh, climate? Well, a lot. How they build, it depends on where you look. We, you have, uh, I mean, Ghana has a lot of rural parts where they still build uh, the, the the local mud houses with mm -hmm. with thatch roof. Um, they they have the problem. I I think I mean earth building is a wonderful way. I cool. really I'm yeah. in love with it. It's the second yeah. to to bamboo, and I even think they go together very well. Absolutely. Um, yeah. But if you look at this traditional houses, the the issues they have, they get washed away by the rains and or. Mm -hmm things like that. If you look at the more modern house that every Ghanaian wants to build, a cement house, <laughs> uh, they they have issues. I mean, I, I, I'm not sure if I have entered a house which didn't have the problem of the moisture coming up the walls. I mean, when you are inside the house, you see the down parts of the walls always have the the, the paint comes off and and yeah they humid they, it's, yeah it's, it's it's a lot of humidity there and then i don't know if the foundations are not strong enough or deep enough but it's it's a it's a very common problem in in these cement houses uh, that they have yeah it's true and yeah, i, I think I think yeah. if you if you take the traditional methods using earth, uh, uh, but like advance them, I mean, apply advanced skills or, or um, yeah techniques to it. Combine it with bamboo, you can you can build wonderful houses, never having issues like that. Yeah, absolutely, and a lot of roof. I mean, if it rains a lot. They need a lot of roof probably and, and probably the roof is expensive. I could imagine the the sink roof, right, is, is expensive. That's a um or I see you have like a red roof there. Um is it is it metal or something? What did you what were you able yeah. to, to use there? This is a Metallic. metal roof. Yeah, metal, I think yeah met, mm -hmm. met, metal roof it's not the most expensive you find different types in ghana like some are more advanced and more expensive you, we mm -hmm. used some yeah in between <laughs> yeah something in between me personally i i don't like those metal roofs very much i love organic roofs as well but it gives you i mean to start that it gives you yeah 
challenges. Yeah, and you have to manage the, the pests. So you have to be fumigating all six or three months, depending how many uh, insects or, or pests are in this natural roof. So it's yeah. another challenge, another level. <laughs> and you have to replace it. Um, mm -hmm. So yeah. it's not easy to convince the people over there to, to do that. They, <laughs> I mean, that's, that's a challenge that you are talking about sustainable ways of building uh, and using earth and using bamboo and those are the materials that they have always used and they have experienced that they do not last long and that's not what we are using i mean that the people are using out there in the western world and they see what they are using and they want they want it and they want it the same way why it might not be the right thing for their climate. And also now the Western world is seeing that they haven't gone the right way with what they are doing. And they are using resources that are not available forever and in all quantities. So um, challenging. We have to rethink. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. But yeah, that's that's the issue if you if you go to ghana and tell them hey let's use earth and let's use bamboo they look of at course. you and they are disappointed <laughs> of course so that's that's i think that's normal that's everywhere actually uh, around the world you know it's not just limited to ghana it's uh very few places where uh, people will really uh, right now think about the organic, natural, regenerative uh, building construction. I think we're still very early in time um, and um, most likely it will change, you know, um, because of what you're doing and what others are doing is showing that there are options, there are alternatives and uh, uh, many alternatives are, are much better than what is the the western standard of of building in in europe right because they have another climate so really that's simple um I w one other point i wanted to um uh, talk about you is um did you discover bamboo in africa or did you discover it somewhere else what was the moment you said oh i think i need to continue to work with bamboo Tell me more about that, please. <laughs> well, actually, I discovered bamboo in Ghana. I knew about bamboo before, before then, but it was just like, uh, yeah, this ornamental bamboo that grows even here outside in my garden. <laughs> uh, so it was uh, in Ghana that this love for bamboo started and the fascination it was around. Yeah, it was when I first came to Ghana uh, in 2012, <clears throat> I visited, it was a local bar called Jungle Bar and they were having a lot of plants and uh, this beautiful furniture. And I was wondering what are they made of? And I learned, yeah, they are made of bamboo and this giant grass is, is growing in Ghana. So I, I later wanted to have this furniture. Um, I used to live in Ghana for about four years. So I, I said, I want this furniture for the house. And I went to survey uh, where to get them, where they make them. Mm -hmm. And that's where the whole story started. Yeah, I learned about bamboo in Ghana, bamboo in general, the potential of bamboo. Um, I mean, when it comes to development and, and so I, I was thinking, why, why do, why are they not using bamboo when they have this, this resource? Um, yeah, available, that's, right? That's, Yes, Locally. they have it available, and then yeah. I then I learned that they don't they don't like it very much. I mean, they don't uh, appreciate it uh, at all. So I wanted to find out what are the reasons behind it, and I I deep dived into it and thought I think I want to do something about this. <laughs> so yeah. 
Cool. I mean, it's pretty cool uh, how sometimes an experience uh, sparks something and, and it gets into a big project and you really uh, enable a, a lot of positive change over time. Yes, over <laughs> right? time. Yeah. Over time. <laughs> step by yes. step. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah, step by step. Yeah, when exactly. it comes to to bamboo, there are so many fields that you can go into it. I mean, where you can really um, drive development with bamboo. Uh, so uh, sometimes I even get confused in my mind where to go next because it's, I mean, the the opportunities, the potential is 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 so huge. Um, Absolutely. That yeah, well. You can't swallow it all. We have to take it bit by bit and yeah, that's see true. where where we can get. And um, another thing which probably is challenging is you you work uh, between three organizations on on two different continents, so um, you have a lot of coordination uh, to do, and probably you have to go like once every year to Ghana in person, right? To be there and, and, and on location or what, how do you manage that? Um, what can you share there? I mean, definitely it's a lot of communication. <laughs> mm -hmm. uh, yeah, a lot of communication. And also I used to go there. Uh, I think, yeah, I was there every year. I try to reduce it because I, I, I also think about my own personal uh, footprint. So, mm -hmm. um, yeah, going on a plane is... is yeah. Big carbon footprint. Always. <laughs> That's true. It's, it's always a, a big trouble for me, but uh, yeah, it's necessary. It's also necessary to go there. But we are very lucky uh, that we have this partners. We have found this partners. It's mm -hmm. mm, not long time it, in 2022 that we established this partnerships, and it was the best thing that could have happened because they are really. Um, taking those things up in Ghana and they are responsible for the implementation and um, it it works well. Yeah, it works well through them. I imagine it has to be uh, because else it's like kind of mission impossible if you're in Germany and the work is in, in a total other uh, location. Uh, do you have the same time zone or is it also slightly different? Uh, slightly different is uh, now is one hour that we have the winter okay. time in Germany during okay. summertime you know we have this time switch of yeah. one hour so yeah. then it's two hours difference mm. in in summer but now it's just one so it's, it's better and what's the what's the outlook there tell me a little bit um what are you working on this year next year what's on the plate there uh, regarding um uh, current projects, um, what can you share? Uh, well, for now, um, the next steps, is, the next tiny steps, let me say, <laughs> um, is to to build the store, I mean, to build places in order to store the treated bamboo um, mm -hmm. and then drying drying space. Uh, we have the the treatment facility now the pool and everything but we need those uh, so yeah. more roof more roof <laughs> more roof, <laughs> more roof. Lots of so, roof. <laughs> yeah that's what's yeah. on the agenda for now we we recently we we did the borehole because before mm -hmm. then we didn't have water uh, supply mm -hmm. at the at the project site which mm -hmm. was really i mean Complicate. yeah we come to challenges uh, uh, that you have when you build in ghana especially at a at a remote place so mm -hmm. the last Time when the students were there, the last construction phase, they brought water in in jerry canes in canisters. So wow. lots of them. They filled the whole tank. I think there is a picture where you see the big uh, poly tank. They mm -hmm. filled this with small canisters going up and down. So <laughs> wow. So we 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 have a a, a borehole now directly at the center, which is also important for the, the water, for the 
solution, the, the treatment solution and all of that. Of course. How so many then, liters does in that uh, bath go uh, where you have the salt and that too? That's oh, a lot of liters there, right? Yeah, no, you are asking the wrong person. Okay, my, okay. My, my colleagues, my colleagues could answer that, but I'm yeah. not the I'm not a person of uh, numbers. But it's huge, figures. right? It's, what is it's, it like? I can 15 meters the, or more? Uh, it's, it's 10, 10, 10 by two or 10, 10 by, by two. one meter. Okay, so yeah. it's a huge mm. bathtub. <laughs> and one meter deep, so one yeah, minute, yeah, it is. <laughs> a yeah. lot of water goes in there. That, yeah, yeah, definitely. So okay, no, yeah, that's that, that's for now. And then we are we are in discussion and communication with the university with university Rhine Main again. Mm -hmm. They start, and this is this is the great thing about it. They start. They have already started. Mm -hmm. Now they do the concepts for what I've already mentioned before, the workshop area, the community center, the community place, I mean, mm -hmm. um, of, of the center, the, the heart mm. of the center later. Um, yeah. They already developed the, the concepts for it. They are on mm -hmm. the job. And then the next step will be a summer school where they do a mock-up building in Germany and then at the beginning of 2025, they another group of students and teachers, of course, professors are coming to Ghana. And then we have another add on. We will bring them together with students from Ghana. So um, we are well, facilitating. Cool. Uh, so you're working with four different organizations, not only three. You're also uh, well, working with the university. Yeah, Actually, well, yeah. and more are coming. As I already said, like our association, Grow Color for Ghana, we are no experts in no field that, I mean, I'm a social worker. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I, 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 I'm not an architect. And so um, we, we also, we have partners, we collaborate with other institutions as well, as well to get the expertise needed in order to, to get this done. For example, we have, uh, we got consultation from engineers without borders. INBA, we have an, a memorandum of understanding agreement with INBA Ghana. I am not sure if you know INBA, one of the leading. Of course. Yeah, yeah INBA, yeah. exactly. So, um, yeah, that's, and that's... we hope more are coming up because we need, we need the expertise and, and the, the players that bring, I mean, that fill the gaps that we can't bring. You can't do this alone. So if we come together, we can make it. <laughs> Absolutely. And uh, that, I that's think that's mainly the part that, that we are doing as grow or what I am doing, like being in between all these um, players and yeah get them all together, do some coordination and. Yeah, and, and what we've seen from the photos, I mean, it's pretty impressive to see um, how it has been built and at the end, uh, the, the structure which is standing. Um, so uh, I think it's pretty cool, to be honest. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah, and I... probably when we speak again in maybe one year or I don't know when the next podcast, uh, you'll be able to share, I assume, like uh, lots of updates uh, regarding um, the project there. <laughs> and uh, maybe do you already know when you're doing like the first uh, workshop there or um, is that not yet planned? Uh, well, actually, the first workshop was already taking place when the students from Germany were coming and then mm -hmm. working together with, 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 with the locals, it was kind of a workshop and mm -hmm. we, we going to continue like that. Uh, we, yesterday, it was yesterday or the day before yesterday, we just had a meeting talking about, uh, the staff training. So we want to organize workshops for that as well. Uh, so 
Our issue now is to find the facilitators for these workshops. Mm -hmm. So why the what what I'm trying to say is the the whole construction and establishment of the center is is also is, is already a learning experience and and we we hope that some of the locals who take part and I, I, I do not just hope I, I I'm pretty sure that they are going to be the the future teachers of the center those who are now already involved in in the construction and setting up everything so um, yeah we are we are already into it but when we really have the like the curriculum I well, we need the workshop and seminar area, maybe end of 2025, 20, 2026. 20, Let's see. <laughs> Sounds like that. Let's see. Yeah, it's a long term. Yeah. It's, it's, it's a long term project uh, to, mm -hmm. to, to get it established very well. The other other issues also will be the management of the of the center. We we think the best way to do it is to let it run as a social enterprise so it doesn't it doesn't rely on donations or something but rather um, some revenue is, is generated and and yeah at least so you to, would like to sell locally or, or or produce something there and and generate revenue with that or uh, what's how how's uh, the the plan there yeah definitely we um we are treating bamboo so mm -hmm. uh it's is not easy if not even impossible to get properly treated bamboo in ghana i mean at mm -hmm. least we we have searched for it in the whole whole country and uh, yeah. we yeah, yeah we couldn't get it so uh, and we have already like uh, orders like people were asking if mm, they can get cool. treated bamboo from from us which so you have a market <laughs> yeah well you have a uh, market <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's not for us if i if i say we 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 um yeah. i'm not speaking for grow color for ghana we are in germany yeah, but we for just the project. Want, for the for the project and the the, the people the local people involved mm -hmm. uh yeah it's that's for pretty them. cool but we that's cannot give cool. any treated bamboo out now because we need it for the next of construction <laughs> but still i mean to yeah. know that you know you're already you know that in future there is demand so this is something really cool because yeah, it definitely. shows that what you're doing now i mean it can just increase more demand so you're you're just ahead of your time and you're doing the right thing. <laughs> yeah, I think I mean the man Basically. can can grow can grow so huge if if you establish something like constructing with bamboo more and you, we get there that there will be a building code and it's more common. Well, um, I think is is if you look at Ghana, you, there is a is 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 a huge housing deficit. So. It is worth looking at bamboo in order to 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 tackle that, especially when it comes to 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 um, uh, low cost building. Yeah. Yeah, even though you can also build very expensive with bamboo. I mean, the examples in uh, Ubud or uh, Asia. I mean, there are some really crazy buildings. So it's not limited to low cost or or, but it's, it's for anything. You can use bamboo everywhere. That's the yeah, beauty. That of is it. what I mean. It's, it's huge. The potential is huge. Yeah. Mm -hmm. if, even ecotourism, if you look at, at those luxury Absolutely. resorts that are built with bamboo, so striking, beautiful. Uh, mm -hmm. Yeah. To establish yeah. some good ecotourism. Tourism, yeah. And in, in the China and in the US now, you have a lot of uh, standardized um, industrial bamboo, um, which is like like the known wood so it's just bamboo but it looks like wood and it's in size of wood but it has the performance of bamboo so actually it's better than it performs better most of the time than wood or or um, metal and uh, this is really interesting the challenge mm -hmm. is there is not enough bamboo <laughs> mm. right now 
<laughs> yeah. and less in future. So it's it's really about planting bamboo. Mm -hmm. And um, I think you mentioned before that, that one of your partners does the bamboo planting. So um, who does the bamboo planting in Ghana? Uh, well, it's, it's, it's not that they are going to, oh, we, we, we are going to plant this many hectares of bamboo. They rather did some trials in order to introduce, I mean, introduce species, other species, and mm -hmm. see how they, how, they, um, how they do in the climate. So like um, giant bamboo, probably Dendrochromus asper, and maybe Guadua they tried, or yeah, Guadua, yeah. Blumea, yeah. I think yeah, these ones is is their area. I don't want it to go there too much in order not to say something wrong. Yeah, um, yeah. There's also Inba is is having nurseries, and um, they also they have Aspa and Guadua, but not not in quantities that it can be used com commercially. So currently nobody is planting bamboo yet or has the plan to plant bamboo like on a big uh, scale in Ghana? A big scale, I would say no. Um, I want to, yeah, I want to say it carefully because I don't know the whole of Ghana. Um, you yeah. sometimes you hear here and there so you hear something, but I haven't seen yeah. any real plantation, anything mm. feasible wow. or something that you say that that's the future bamboo. Mm -hmm. And there there are already issues. I there is a, a, a factory has come up, a toilet paper factory. I think it mm -hmm. was some um, uh, yeah with some international influence, I'm not sure. And yeah, we will see, they might look um, after la bamboo very soon, or I think they even run into troubles getting the bamboo for their of course. Uh, yeah. tissue production. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, I mean, it's it's uh, one of the biggest problems when I, I, uh, I talked to a lot of people in the industry, and uh, what I hear is uh, there is not enough bamboo. And we're mm -hmm. just starting, you know, we're just taking off. So, um, I mean, this it's... is going to be really interesting in five, ten years or even earlier. Um, bamboo needs four to six, seven years to, to grow uh, adult, to be really able to be harvested. And, uh, and then you have to look at how to harvest it. I mean, like... It, it, in Ghana, they don't do it in a sustainable way. Like just take those some some out. Like they they do the clear cut method, and then yeah. afterwards it's gone. So um, yeah. they have to yeah, learn it. That the 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 clump management and the sustainable harvesting techniques are all things that need to be introduced. People need to take it up. Yeah. And hopefully if, through training and and the the access to the knowledge and and mm -hmm. everything, hopefully farmers are going to take it Probably. up in the future. More if there is more demand, there is more pressure, and people are more motivated to do it because there is better price probably also then. So um, it should future look better. <laughs> and right I now. believe. I believe so. As soon as they see, uh, is they they can really make money with it, and there is profit coming from it. Oh, they gonna. There will be a lot of bamboo farmers and a lot of bamboo producers and craftsmen and builders, <laughs> but yeah, it has to start somewhere. And first, they have to see. Um, how things can be and what you can build with bamboo. And that's what you're mm -hmm. doing. So that's pretty yes. cool. <laughs> yes. <laughs> uh, Ravea, uh, do you have on your side any closing words, um, thing you would like to share with our audience regarding um, your project in Ghana right now or uh, something upcoming? Well, I, I, I'm, I'm quite excited about what is going on because when I started my research on bamboo some 
years ago, let me say, when I really went deep into it, 2016, there wasn't much to find, even on the mm -hmm. internet, there was just few, and now it's coming up more and more, and I hope this development continues or even grows because if, if the more awareness, the more people going into it and, and working for it, the closer we get to where we want to get. So I, I really like the, 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 the vibe that, that is coming up around bamboo and um, it's very exciting. I'm yeah. I hope more people awesome. join. And, and you're contributing to the knowledge right now because uh, this podcast will be available online and uh, other people interested in bamboo and interested in nonprofit organization will be able to see what you've been doing and, and this will be inspiration. So um, I think that's pretty cool. And uh, yeah, um, from my side, um, don't forget to subscribe on YouTube to Think Bamboo or uh, TikTok Think Bamboo or Instagram Think Bamboo. Uh, that's where we will uh, share the podcast and um, it will also be on the blog. We'll share a link of the website and um, have some uh, summary about what we've been talking about. And again, thank you very much, Robea, for your time. Thank you to you too. A big thank you. <laughs> thank you, JJ. I think your work is also very valuable. Thank you, Robea. And uh, let's keep in touch and um, see... Um, in a few months or a year, how things are, and uh, catch up then and do another updated podcast. <laughs> Can't wait. <laughs> Thank you. Fantastic. Fantastic. Mm -hmm. All good. Bye. Take care. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye. Uh, okay. It's